Jehova Malak, Olam Olamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakes. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, being a very special day, though the date may vary according to the calendars what they have decided. Yet it is a day of great joy, great exaltation, where the entire angelic host and its marching array saluted the birth of my Christ. And this day, what we have come to be renewed in our lives to show forth to the world, as Christ our Lord our God promised for us in John chapter 15, if they have kept my sayings, they will also keep your sayings. And with the spirit of truth, which is the witness for us, with the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we would witness about the birth of my Christ. And the reason, he says, because you are there with me from the beginning. Keeping these things in mind, to learn and to understand what Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has prepared and kept for us on today's date. For his spiritual manna, though the world may look as a way of ritual Christmas, we have something more to learn. It is not the ritual Christmas, but the reality of it as Christ our Lord, our God, our Savior is born for us. And thus he has appeared for the shepherds and also for the way how Maggie, looking upon the star of the east, came along to search my Christ. Understanding few concepts about the way how the word of the Lord of God has been recorded and kept for us, we shall look what was the theme that driven the Lord of God on this earth and what it has to be for us as well, since he has committed into our hands this great responsibility in making disciples of all the nations. Use the privacy of your priesthood to sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and pale wonders of the word of the Lord of God, and we shall come back and learn after this prayer, the things pertaining to today's spiritual manna prepared and kept for us in eternity past. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten and challenge us on this day of your birthday, O Lord, as many people celebrate, as which date it was, people may have controversy on that. That you are born for us without your incarnation there cannot be crucifixion neither there can be resurrection the world like following satan in its rebellion proud attitude in the way they want to ask how it is possible a virgin mary could give birth as you said for us the words which lord god has spoken nothing shall go waste or it think nothing shall go impossible because all things are possible with thee that you have proved many things for us to learn about these standards. I tell Lord, the people in the blindness of their hearts do not believe this, yet we have something more to learn and teach them every day of our life. Only in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Father, being filled or controlled under it, walking in it, and marching in it, 
and if ever we live we live in the holy spirit of christ to do thy will so father we commend everything into thy hands so that sovereign lord you only get all the glory credit through our lives because we are just unprofitable slaves that which is of duty to be done we are doing it so father as we go and study these things what are prepared and kept for us on today's date we pray lord god the holy spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message to the praise of your glory in your grace that you bestowed upon us through christ our lord our savior in christ name we pray sovereign lord amen the things pertaining to the passages in luke chapter 2 as well as the passages in Matthew chapter 2 in Luke chapter 2 we read swaddling cloths laying in a manger he Christ our lord of our god purchased us in the process of this swaddling cloth that is what nothing but we need to look and read and understand the great principle what the word of the lord of our god teaches to us that since he was been laid in the cloth of those swaddling terms He has purchased us through the redemption work of my Christ on the cross. And above all, he was been laid in a manger. The manger represents for us the tombstone what he has kept after his crucifixion and his two deaths, Thanatos and Necros. And furthermore, we have to understand in the way where they were. the path of the animals or where he was been kept in that place israel knows not his master but the animals the ox or the bull knows its master and this is what we read some of the things in luke chapter 2 and there also we find some of the great terms as the gospel towards the gentiles being preached through Paul written by Luke he goes on to teach for us the salutation was first been given to the shepherds the great salutation what we write in the terms pertaining to doxa and hupsiasos theos in the word meant to say glory to lord god in the highest and then n gaze irene on the earth peace and then he says to for us good will towards them who does the will of lord god the father there we find the word for us to understand eudokia and this eudokia as many people do not understand in comparison to ephesians 1 3 6 and 9 they have mistranslated this concept of true grace for us So he says those who are doing the good will of Lord God the Father this great salutation of triplets what we call it has to be used for us to understand that if we obey his word and perform his will that has been laid down upon our shoulders good will is towards us therefore we need to learn that which says for us doxa and hop siastos theo and furthermore and gaze irene and he gives this great salutation for us to learn dear brethren that an gaze irene followed by the word yen anthropos you dokia so epi gaze irene an anthropos you dokia so this is the salutation what is been given to the shepherds so we need to understand why it is for the shepherds because in the church age we have been called to join this church age as disciples and grow up as grammatias new testament scribes and in return make disciples of all the nations so here we have something great for us when luke writes in his gospel towards the gentiles to teach what it is so luke salu- luke in his salutation through the words of the great entire angelic host of angels teaching to us he says glory to lord god to the highest and then he further teaches to us to understand epigeis irene on the earth peace and then he says an anthropos you dokia this word important it is in some of the translations they go for you dokia tas as a plural but here it's singular you dokia blessing 
So we need to understand this because the shepherds in representing to these Gentiles in the church age, they have been given this salutation. They have believed this salutation. Without any delay, they went along to watch the birth of my Christ laying down in a manga kept in swaddling cloths and they understood the name of him as Jesus Jehovah saves. And here we need to look upon the point for us that even we as Gentiles without having any sign or without having any wisdom, that's what he says in Apostle Paul in Romans, the Greeks look for wisdom, the Jews look for sign. But we being born in Christ, we are not looking for wisdom except believing in the words given for us through the Bible. Therefore, the great salutation, what did they do? They went along, they saw, they heard, and they gave praise to Lord God. And afterwards, what did they do? They went along and taught to the abroad as well, stating to the point, Christ our Lord, our God, our Savior is born for us. So looking into these passages in Luke chapter 2, after that great salutation, what they have done, we need to thoroughly understand the principle laid down for us in verse number 15. He says that it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds, again the word shepherds, poiman. So every believer in the church age should be graduated as a shepherd because Christ our Lord our God has made us to be like him. If the slave is like the master, it's enough. And then he goes on, if they persecuted me, far less do you think you will be not persecuted, they will also persecute you. If they have believed thy words, far less do you think if they believe my words far less they are also going to believe my believe your words as well so that's the authority given to us but the people don't understand what is the meaning of the shepherds the shepherds said one to another let us go now unto the bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the lord had lord had made known or no reason to come to know unto us and furthermore we look they came with haste the hebrew word is spudo the word meant to say to desire earnestly and that's what today it is lacking in our pulpits as well as in the minds of the believers not having a great desire earnestly to seek my savior so this is first for the gentiles we are talking about or what we call the church the shepherds represents that when you grow up as grammatias, you will become as in return shepherding to make disciples of the nations. And this is what every believer ought to be like Christ, conforming to the image of his dear beloved son, growing up to the mature stature of thinking of Christ. So he's calling you as shepherds. So every believer has this responsibility to guard what it has been laid down to his hands. So these shepherds came straight away with haste speedily and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying or the one who is Brafos lying in the manga, the way to say a crib. And what did they do? And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad. This is most important, published to discriminate and to make known thoroughly. And saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard wondered. That's what it is. Thaumazo. To be in great marvel and admiration at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So this is for the Gentiles what we need to be today in our pulpits. This is our work. We haven't sought for sign. We haven't sought for wisdom. When we come to Matthew chapter 2, the Magis, all the way representing the Jews, they saw the star and the followed. This was a sign given to them. The sign which long back Isaiah Chase says in chapter number 7, a virgin shall give birth. And do you think it's a strange thing? You want a sign for you? He gave a sign of a wonderful one that a virgin is going to give birth. And this is going to come from the rod of the stem of Jesse and is going to be the king forever and his kingdom shall never end. It's a perpetual kingdom. He shall reign with righteousness. His lions will be grooded with righteousness and his reigns with faithfulness. That's what we read in Isaiah chapter 11. And yet though these people, few, three magis came along to worship the creator, offered them the 
present offerings towards the Lord. In today as well, the Israelites are not able to look. Therefore, he concludes for us in Romans chapter 11 as well as in 9 to teach the blindness is happened to them so that the fullness of Gentiles should come to pass. And therefore, anyone who believes in Christ now is no longer into the standards of saying that he is a Jew or he is having racism to say that he is an Indian or American, but all are one in Christ. We are the church. And the will of Lord God the Father is that none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Because those who fail to come to the thorough knowledge of his glory, he is going to take his vengeance like the lightning frame flame of fire that's what he did with Aaron's two sons Nadab and Abihu and the lightning bolt which hit them and the way what we can look it has made even their genealogy to be put to end there were no children for Nadab and Abihu so that his progeny could be continued in the same manner, one thing we need to understand, if our offerings as life to give to Lord as a living sacrifice has been not accepted, it becomes cursed one not fit for. It becomes anathema. Though, so we need to learn the things pertaining to Bible doctrine that we deal with him in according to his standards, his work, not our words, not our knowledge, not our thinking. So we find over here the lesson taught for us that Nadab and Abihu were left childless. There were no progeny for them. Even today, if we don't grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the great vengeance of Lord God may hit you or indicate you with the standards of such lightning flame. Those who haven't come to know the epinosis knowledge of Bible doctrine. And then the gospel when they have not heard. So you will find two things. Number one, in the Luke account, we read the standards which have been given for us to the shepherds. So we need to be the shepherds, not only the pastor teachers, every believer when he grows up as per Matthew 13, 52, joined as a disciple, growing up as a grammatias, he is a shepherd. And what was the duty of the shepherd? They came hastily and they looked with an earnest desire what were the things told to them. And when they saw those things, it came to pass and they went abroad and they told about my Christ birth to many nations. That's what it is. And then what happened? They heard and they went along to give praising and thanksgiving to Lord God the Father when they have suddenly were made known by the multitude of the heavenly angel praising Lord God. They accompanied the work of the angels. So here, why were the angels given to the shepherds? Who is the angel? We need to look away in Revelation chapter 1. He says, the one who holds the seven stars in his hand and to the seven churches, the historical trends of the church age, starting from the Ephesus and then ending up in Laodicean. These seven churches, one who is the angel, he is nothing but the pastor teacher. So what are these angels along with them? These shepherds, they need to grow up. And that's the principle what we need to learn in this church age. It's not just going and preaching the gospel, but it making to be the disciples. That's the great burden laid down upon our shoulders. But yesterday we read in Jeremiah 23 verses 33 and following, every man's word became a burden to them. And if ever you mention what is the burden of the Lord of a God, he's going to make you a continual reproach and continual shame. Olam, Olam, Kerib him and Olam, Olam, Kelumit. That's what we read yesterday. The reason is that, dear brethren, you haven't been living a life according to the praise of his glory that which has been kept for you alive on this earth you are still thinking that you can be looking for some signs and you can be looking for wonders the way how the Israelites have rejected my Christ therefore dear brethren the great duty laid down for us in this church age in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit alone is to go and make known to this people what is the burden of the Lord and yet we are into a very serious business in this church age we cannot be as the terms as the world testament people were waiting for signs and wonders in the church age we have been given the greatest sign the sign is that you are now the temple of the living lord of a god you have been now indwelled by lord god the holy spirit for the purpose of making disciples and in return proving that you have made disciples in all the nations therefore the angel introduced the shepherds the shepherds went along and told many people about the birth of my christ and many people were thaumazo or pale wonder about those things what they have been said 
And today, we being the disciples, we haven't even given room. Oh, first of all, we need to ask a question, are you the disciple of the Lord? We are celebrating today Christmas. For what reasons? To eat, to drink, and to enjoy. That's it. You have forgot what is the burden of the Lord. You haven't even made mention of the burden of the Lord. What the angels saluted, they went along to the shepherds. The shepherds hastily went along to cross-check. And when they found, they went along to preach about these things abroad. And you are not able to understand. You are thinking Christmas is all about to eat, to drink and to enjoy. No, dear brethren, not at the cost of your fellow men being perished. Not at the cost of unbelievers' soul not being saved. Yesterday we read about the incident of those three brave men when David records, when David says he has a wish, not as a command, as a wish, I would, wish, I would drink the water of Bethlehem. They kept their life for risk and they bought the water, the three brave men. And what did David do? He says, no, I don't want to drink this water. Not at the cost of your life. Though he wished, he did not drink. Though we have been mandated to go and make disciples of all the nations, we are enjoying the grace of the Lord of our God to celebrate Christmas upon Christmas, which is not at all a true Christmas for us. If ever you would look without having any unbeliever being made known about my Christ, you are not having any true Christmas at all in your thinking. You are just making a vain glory of your show in this Christmas to this world. You are not truly really understanding what is the power of Lord God the Father in this church age given to us through Christ. Therefore, he says, you are with me from the beginning. We have been kept as kinekatesu, spiritual quality, a quality which did not exist earlier, it's now for us in the church age. And in order to understand that spiritual quality, he says in Isaiah chapter 11, the way how Lord our God fulfilled the purpose of his redemption plan through his son by giving unto him though he was in the standards of humanity and the deity as well indwelling in him he teaches a lesson for our moron minds to learn that it is only by the power of lord god the holy spirit because this church age is nothing but the ministry of lord god the holy spirit every day we spend these are the days of lord god the holy spirit we cannot waste our time because these are the days of lord god the holy spirit therefore he says for us and they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. How? It shall grow. The word for grow is over here for us. As the word grow means to come to its fruit or bearing fruit. Para, the word meant to say to cast to bear fruit, to show fruit. And figuratively to bear and to bring forth fruit. And from where? Out of his roots, Sharesh, which is nothing but that which is firm and having a deep root. Therefore, he says for us in the church, church is a ground and pillar of truth. So where we need to root up? We need to root up in Christ, he says in Ephesians. And yet what are we looking today? No root. Yet we are not able to understand what we shall bear fruit. But here Christ our Lord of our God teaches to us that branch that is Christ our Lord of our God which shall come out. He shall grow out of his roots. And if it not being rooted and grounded in love of my Christ, he says in Ephesians, we cannot bear this fruit. Therefore he says, how does he produce that root and fruit? The logic is very simple for us. It teaches the Spirit of the Lord. That's how it is. If it is not by the Ruach, the Spirit of the Lord, which shall rest upon him, the word Nuak, Ruach, Nuak, the word meant to say to settle down. Even today in the present Christendom, every believer's body is the temple of the living Lord of a God. You have been called in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be rooted and grounded and to settle down in the fellowship of the Lord God. Therefore, the word Nuak meant to say, to rest, to settle down, to cause to rest and to give rest, to obtain rest, and to have, to dwell and to stay well with you. That's what the word meant to say, to settle down. Now in the church age, every believer's body is the temple of living Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
Indwelling is permanent, but the fellowship is temporary. Whenever you sin either by thought, word, or deed, you're going to lose that fellowship. Therefore, the great mandate given for us in Ephesians 5.18, be controlled of the Spirit every breath of your life. In Galatians 5, he has been said, if ever you live in the Spirit, you also peripatao in the Spirit. If ever you peripatao in the Spirit, make sure that you still I can march in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So here we find the Spirit of the Lord God shall rest upon him. And in this church age, if it is not by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we couldn't fight this battle. As Christ, our Lord of God, from his humanity on the day of his birth, was born in the Spirit. We at least after believing in Christ, we have been given to make the temple of living Lord. And yet after believing in Christ, we have been given the human spirit after the Holy Spirit. So that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, beareth witness with our human spirit that we are the children of Lord God. And without, human without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. And he says we are not of our own. So there is no way you can understand what you are in the Lord God without Lord God the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Therefore he has been sealed until the day of redemption for you Lord God the Holy Spirit. You have been baptized in Lord God the Holy Spirit. So we have something great for us we read. The same procedure for Christ but he was born in the Spirit. We have been made after believing in Christ to be indwelt by the Spirit when you believe in the Lord by faith alone in Christ alone. Because the spiritual phenomena cannot be understood by the natural mind or the, the, either the soulish mind. They are hard for them to perceive. But what the Spirit has given for us, we have something great to learn. We have something unique to teach. We have something wherewith Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, can reveal to us our burden, our purpose and carry it till to the end. We are not laboring. It is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who laboreth with us, he says in Colossians 1.29. We are not of our own. He says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, We have been bought with a great price because your body is now the temple of the living Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore glorify Lord God the Father in your flesh. We have something great for us to learn every day. Under the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, we can be qualified, rendered fit to stand in his presence. If you don't have the seal of Lord God, the Holy Spirit upon you, you are not of your own. And if you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as a true believer in the Lord, you would mind the divine things and flesh activities you would cut off. Flesh attitudes which separates you to manifest the great love of God the Father through your life will be cut off. And what you would do, you will be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you would love your enemies as well. Therefore, we need to understand, has Lord God, the Holy Spirit, resting upon us, Nuak, dwelling in us, made up settlement, permanent abode in you. And that's by default at the moment of salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone, every body is now, every believer's body is now, to be more specific, the temple of the living Lord of a God and Lord God, the Holy Spirit's body it is, because it has been now given to display the Shekinah glory of my Christ. And yet, what are we finding today? They say when you talk in tongues, you got the Spirit. They say when you do miracles and healings, you got the Spirit, which is absolutely vain and vague. It's not at all worth it. doesn't even come closer enough to understand what the Bible is teaching for us. It doesn't even come closer enough to understand. And yet, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ laid down upon us this burden. He called us for His purpose through the witness of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our life, for the purpose stating to the point, if they have kept my word, they will also keep your word. And He said, you are with me right from the beginning. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, before the foundation of the world. He has chosen us to be holy and blameless. For what purpose? Colossians 1, 22. So that we could stand beside Him, holy, amomas, and anacletas unaccusable but every breath of our life when now we are out of fellowship satan gets a riling accusation against you in the presence of lord god the father and yet it is the righteousness and justice of lord god the father to grace us out one more day in our life because of our advocate lord and savior jesus christ if it were not so then we wouldn't have been alive over here he says i have already paid for it O lord and it becomes now a family matter is going to spank us to correct our life. 
and yet the people want to perish without correcting their life. Therefore, two illustrations given for us in Ecclesiastes 8, the wicked he thinks. How he's going to prosper, but his days are will be cut off, he says. Even the way in Job chapter 8 we read, how the wicked he thinks he cannot be taken out, but the way how as a flower fades, he's going to fade away. We need to learn those things, but don't have time. We shall come, we shall learn. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit to expound, even the standards of Second Chronicles chapter 15, which we needed to continue from Jeremiah 23. But since today the world is celebrating Christmas, but for those who are true believers in Christ, wherewith they gave room for Christ in their heart, so that they cannot sin against Lord God's word, they have every day Christmas. But yet the world is in the standards of apostasy as a warning to be blow the trumpet. We are giving you the information. It is purely by the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what Christ our Lord our God endured on the cross, and now given for us the same power of Lord God the Holy Spirit having access with that spirit to Lord God the Father to endure till we could finish our calling wherewith when we go back home we could say Father in nothing we are ashamed in nothing we are ashamed but in everything which you have given to us we have glorified thee to the maximum and that's the privilege given to every believer in Christ as the shepherds went along to look what is the principle what the angels gave the salutation was right or wrong they searched they gave great thanks to God the Father and they celebrated that and they went along and showed for many people they made known abroad the things of Christ today though the world is celebrating in a ritual standards to eat, to drink, and to rejoice in the Christmas, which is no way concerned to the truth of the burden of the Lord, how it would be for them to celebrate at the cost of perishing unbelieving souls without knowing the truth. So for that cause, what does the Lord our God say? Looking upon the time, you should be the communicators of Bible doctrine. And what went wrong? You haven't been given the serious warnings of these conditions. Yet you have been given to daub you with untempered mortar and you went along to celebrate with your faker, your false pastor teachers who are no, not at all pastor teachers, neither the angel of the Lord given to you in your temple, in your church to stand and teach the truth. Thus, you find all false concepts like Ravidas and many other things, but not the true word of the Lord of our God. Therefore, in these many years of your life, you might have celebrated Christmas, but without having proper knowledge, because you have the zeal of the Lord, but no knowledge, he says. But over there we find in Isaiah, when he teaches to us, the zeal of the Lord of our God will perform this, for the reason that he gave up his word, and he shall not forsake or profane or break up his word. Therefore, we find in Isaiah chapter 48, in verse number 11, even for my sake, even for my sake, I have swore, and I will not make my name to be profaned among you, the men of this world. Therefore, we need to understand how are we profaning. Lord God said, He has sent many sons unto His glory. Lord God says in Romans 8, the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons so that they could be liberated. And how do you think Lord God has forsaken us? How do you think He has broken up His word? No, He has given us His burden. He has given us that great commission to do His will. It is we, we have forsaken the Lord. It is we looking into the lustful patterns of the holes in nature. It is we looking into the standards of this earth. We have failed to look the truth and we are performing that which is not at all in accord with Bible doctrine. It is we who have forsaken but Lord God remembers you every day, every breath of your life. Lord God remembers you through Lord God the Holy Spirit when it involves in you to make you to realize what is the purpose of me calling you in Christ. What is the purpose of the burden laid down upon your shoulders in achieving the work of my Christ. And yet we do find in this church age many people not interested to build up their habitation to Lord God through Lord God the Holy Spirit Ephesians 2 22 and yet they are wasting their life not understanding if Christ our Lord our God set forth a model and a pattern for us if ever he opened up his mouth it was in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit because he was born out of the old sin nature that's what the virgin birth is all about he was not in the old sin nature though he took the form of a flesh and his deity was not being demonized 
communist this has for us in Philippians 2 as well Colossians 1 as well we need to learn about these things very carefully and we need to know he was out of the old sin nature but we are born in the old sin nature and while he says he was born in Lord God the Holy Spirit right from his day till to the point of his crucifixion and resurrection from cradle to the grave what we need to learn or cradle to the cross it has to be more specific then if it has been so here after believing in Christ we have been born again that's our now cradle point from there on till we go and die on this earth or the point of cross or the point of which we say very specifically to be used the word not only the cross but the grave or the martyr or my witnesses what we will be developing we need to be available before the rapture of the church that it has to be purely in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit therefore we have been stated in first Peter 2 1 and 2 as you are being born again newly born babies what we need to do desire sincerely the pure milk and what it is free from it is free from every attitude of a dirty rat. Your mental attitude sins. It is free from your hypocrisy. It is free from your maligning, gossiping, judging. It is free from everything and it is making you to be a relaxed believer in Christ. And those who drink the sincere milk of the word of the Lord of our God, they are in those standards, says the Bible. But up to what extent and which standard you are, you need to think. Because we are, when we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there can no way be any energy of the flesh. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When you're not in operating in the energy of your flesh, you are strong because you are now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through rebound. And when you are in the process of rebound or getting back into the controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you need to know you will have a relaxed mental attitude. You are away from divine viewpoint. You are not worried what the world thinks. You are worried what the Bible thinks. Because when Aaron was being made his sons to be judged and called him to go back and do the service of the Lord. It is the work wherewith he says no prejudiced mind towards having to show partiality though he had the sons and to fail in his ministry. Therefore Aaron was said it is God's viewpoint. You do not weep for your sons. They rebelled against the Lord. They put something which was an unholy fire and it was being taken out. And Aaron was taught a lesson, so we shall be taught a lesson. No prejudiced minds. We need to come back to serve the Lord of our God in spirit and in biblical truth. And Lord God doesn't spare. He did not spare his own son on the cross. How much more you would think you and I could be spared. And walking to serve two masters, becoming slaves to two masters. Doesn't he say in Matthew 6, 24, you cannot serve God. You cannot serve mammon at the same time. Either you will hate one and you will love another. Therefore, when we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the true repentance in Christ, we need to come back to understand. It is no longer we who walk. It is Lord God, the Holy Spirit should walk. It is no longer we. We open up our mouth. It's Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to open up our mouth in the power of the scriptures to produce grace to the unbelievers and to season with salt. Therefore, dear brethren, we have great many things over here to learn. And he goes on to teach for us, the spirit of the Lord, when it shall rest upon him, it is the spirit of wisdom, kakma, understanding, what the unbelievers do not have, what the unbelievers do not consider their life to account for this wisdom. And therefore we have been stated several times, Colossians 4, 6, season with grace, your every word. Walk with wisdom towards them that are not. Don't walk like fools. And how much importance is this wisdom? Because without this wisdom, what we can do? The fear of the Lord of a God is the beginning of the wisdom, knowing our life in Christ. Therefore, for the Gentiles, which have been come now in church, under the tunic word, believing in the Lord, you need to know what is this wisdom. Without knowing this wisdom, you cannot understand. 
And therefore, this great privilege given to us in this church age, the wisdom of the Lord. And what is that? It's a spirit of wisdom. And we have read many things from the book of Proverbs as well as in Psalms. What is that wisdom, Bible doctrine, kakma? In the Greek, epinosis, knowledge, full knowledge. Where do you find wisdom? You will find in anywhere so that you can buy and purchase and keep it for you and show forth to the world that you have wisdom. No, you can find it at the feet of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord alone. So for Christ it was the spirit dwelling in him, in him right from his birth. But for us after believing in Christ it is his spirit who dwells in us. And then what is the attributes of the spirit? Number one, it is the spirit of wisdom. In the church age today laid down for us the burden to go and evangelize the world and to make disciples of all the nations. First we need to have the spirit of wisdom, kakma. And then this spirit of wisdom gives you to have the spirit of discernment or bin in the Hebrew word. It meant to say understanding or perfectly to make known and to absorb and to distinguish and to discern and to look diligently being taught and instructed to become prudent and regard what it is to do in your mental concept of thinking to execute physically as well. Because many people don't understand what is that they need to have first as a man thinketh so he is. Today the world is running behind the mind to look what is this physical anatomy of this body, how to work and how the things go on to look into it. In the Gregorian calendar it was on Jan 6th, 10 days being reduced and they made 365 days. If it were not it would be 377 days or 376 days in a year. So if you can consider if your age is 30, you have been shortened with every year 10, year, 10 days. And for 30 years, you would be almost all 300 days. Or for another 6 years, it will be 360. And if you would calculate that days, in the term of this age, you are shortened by one year in the Gregorian calendar. If your age is 39, it would be now 38. One year shortened because 10, 10 days extra have been given to you in every year of your life in that calendar. And there you need to understand how powerful is this mind. The understanding in the word of the Lord of our God, this mind could cause us to know the burden laid down upon our shoulders. It will cause us to understand every day like the way Daniel was three times a day kneeling in his presence and doing his prayers and his information what he got for the 70 weeks to those Israelites. Even we, when we go through the process of kneeling down in his presence, even we, we can discern mentally to have that strength in our flesh. We can make our kneecaps to be the kneecaps of iron. So here the whole logic is in your mind, as a man thinketh, so he is. And today the world is searching behind what is this mindoscopy, how this brain can work out its own illness in its humanity given by God the Father to defend the diseases and sicknesses. Doesn't the word say very simple, a good word is a health. A bad message rotten's and breaks your bones. You need to understand what you think that's going to affect so you're having the spirit of wisdom, you're having the spirit of understanding as well. And that Bina, which is nothing but mental conception to discern what is right and what is, what is wrong. We have been given to read the Bible at least once in our entire life upon our knees. We have been said in the church age, we are the kings being ordered by the Lord. The kings in Deuteronomy 17, 18 would write a copy of the law and they would, and they would take it for correction before the priests. And if the kings were written any mistakes, second time again, they need to write how it is. Because that's the persuasion in the word of the Lord of our God, what we need to have. Because in this world, wherever you go it's been filled with obscurity darkness and departure from the truth that's what it was the time of my lord's birth on this earth as well it was a season of winter but we need to look though the word of the lord of god was been given to the israelites they made it to be obscured they made it to be apostasy they made it to be absolutely darkened 
so it is today for us we are also in the church age now though the glorious light of my christ has been shining he says in john 1 1 through 14 yet we are not able to understand the people not to accept this light and then he gives the witness who accepted that light it is john the baptist and then furthermore he says those who have been born in this church age to them also he gave the power to become the sons of god so that we could witness like that light on this earth so in the midst of this darkened crooked perverse nation generations we have made obscured like the way the jews made obscure to my lord's birth and he doesn't he ask have you not read about me if you have read about me you would have known who i am and he says if you have seen me you have seen god the father and yet we look over there in isaiah 9 everlasting father his name is all about and though he was a mighty god 410 code for god elohim in the form of the flesh he came yet these people do not understand that word mighty which is so much powerful for us to know our flesh in the work of lord's will alone to be greater in its gabor strength we are having something great of a strength in this flesh that's mighty enough he says and yet the people don't understand the spirit of understanding because they don't love to discern what is right they are looking what are the concepts being illustrated by fakery of false men in our TV media and in our media of your social network they're really not able to discern what is right what is the power given to them they have made their mind to end up at the age of 70 or 80 thinking that it is still grievous for them if they would survive more than 70 or 80 years but the word of the lord of god teaches there to those who are sinners yet their life would be for 70 to 80 years but for the life of them who are really doing the will and the work of lord god the father 80 years is a senior citizen stage when they reach And minimum in the terms of Christ birth age 33 every believer will have thrice of that age because we have been given much from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to go on to preach and to teach and to make disciples because these are the shepherds in the viewpoint of the angels and at the convert of once you know how the angels rejoice we read in Luke 15 much more than that we need to celebrate when we have bought the fallen believer who has been fallen into this world who have been become now slave to the world not knowing the truth because the work of satan is like that king herod who designed who feared the birth of christ has been in this believer now because he has now become a believer the strategy of satan to say number one see that he doesn't believe in the lord and if at all he believes in the lord see that he doesn't come up to grace and to know the truth because the truth will set them free Therefore, knowing not this grace, he wants to perish. And when he's perishing without knowing the grace, we, the fellow believers, as long as it has been called today, he says in Hebrews 3, encourage one another, exhort one another, pull down one another to the praise of his glory, because we are indeed dirty rats, fit for nothing. Yet it is by the surpassing grace of my Christ and his righteousness and his justice in the propitiation of Lord God, work on the cross. He has called us in grace and in love to serve him. Yet do not do the same thing as David sinned, yet he came back. So we are, we are sinning every day by grieving and squelching and waxing and putting to test Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath of our life we are doing it breath by breath yet come back and do the will of Lord God the Father using the privacy of your priesthood as long as you have been kept alive on this earth because your days have been counted and if ever you fall to the sin and to death category we cannot help saith even the Lord God do not pray for such men we cannot help because you don't love to use rebound you don't love to come back and serve the Lord of a God in spirit and in truth and these things are most essential for us to learn. Your spirit of understanding, where does it go? Where does it think about? If you listen to the world, fear of men, you will lose your life. The true power life, the flesh which has been given to us as a mighty one. Therefore, Lord God says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the standards of his word. He goes on to teach to us, dear brethren, very specifically, sanctify your flesh, your soul, and your spirit to Lord God. Sanctify. Keep apart to the praise of His glory. Keep apart. 
even in your flesh you want. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, he says, glorify the Lord of our God in your flesh and not in your spirit. KJV is wrong. The original Greek says, soma, body. And yet the people are entrusted to go back and do the things. Your spirit is ready, the flesh is weak. No spirit of discernment. Because indeed, in order to make fit this flesh, he says in 1 Corinthians 9.24, I strive for the mastery. In order to make fit this flesh, he says in Luke, when he was about to go to the cross, indeed, spirit is ready, flesh is weak, he says he knelt and prayed to the Lord. The process is to kneel down and make this flesh trained up to the mighty works of Christ. This is what we are. We need to be training up our flesh every day, kneeling down in his presence. Because we read in Psalm 72, 15, Daily, continually, I will give you thy praises. Barak, Barak meant to say to kneel down. Kneeling down, I will pray my prayers unto thee, O Lord. And yet we are not interested to look these things. Therefore, dear brethren, he says for us to teach the spirit of understanding. And then we have the spirit of counsel, yetsa, advice, or the purpose of plan. It will make us to give counsel and to understand and to determine and to guide you as the paraclete guide the rest of your life in the standards of Bible doctrine alone. It will make you to understand. So these are the things what the Spirit, when it rested upon my Christ, did. Number one, Spirit of Wisdom. Number two, Spirit of Understanding. Number three, Spirit of Counsel. And it is also Spirit of Gebura, Strength. What a privilege it is when we read Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, said the Lord. In Isaiah 8, 13, we read, Sanctify yourselves. When he goes on to say, not to worry about the conspiracy as the people think it's a conspiracy. Lord God alone is your fear and Lord God alone is your dread. Do you know why these things? Because it is the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit in us. When Lord God the Holy Spirit indwells in us and if Lord God be with us, who could be against us? There can be none. Therefore the spirit that is in you is greater than the one who is in this world, saith the Lord of our God in 1 John 4.4. 4. So we have something great to understand. When Lord God was being led with wisdom and understanding and counsel and might, he enjoyed to the most, he says, to the point that, do you not think if I pray to God the Father, he would send his legions of angels? And we have been now indwelled by the Creator. And what as a Christian we enjoy, Satan cannot even have a glimpse of it. Therefore, we have been given the power to trample Satan under our feet. And we have something great and unique for us to understand. When we use the word to trample Satan under our feet, those who fall according to the rule of Bible doctrine alone. If not Satan, like a roaring lion, it wants to devour as many as it can. Therefore, the work of my Christ being done in the Spirit, then how much more does our work resemble if we are not doing it in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? He was born in the Spirit. We are born again in the Spirit, sealed until the day of redemption. And yet we don't possess, number one, wisdom. We don't have understanding of our life. We don't have counsel as such to take every day to renovate the standards of our thinking. Neither we are able to exercise the power of that spirit under the terms called as Gebura, our bravery, our valor, our mighty deeds through Christ. And then he goes on to teach for us. He has the spirit of knowledge, the at, which is nothing but skill and having the knowledge to be available for cunning as well as awareness. This is nothing but yada, to learn more and more about my Christ. And above all, the last one, the fear of the Lord Spirit. The terror and the fearing and the awesome. That's what today many people don't have this word yare, which is used for 3373 chord, which Job had. Here he says, every believer should have this fear of the Lord. And yet, Adam, when he sinned, he did not find the same fear when he said, I was hid under the tree because I feared thee. And the word over there is 3372. It's not 3373. He now feared for the world. And that's the world, nothing but his own wife. 
So Christ our Lord our God led his life in the standards of this fear. When we read, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. It was a spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And then he says, he shall make quick understanding. And that's what he is going to give as a scent of a delight in the fear of the Lord. Only when you have these attributes of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you, then you're going to get quick understanding in the fear of the Lord God. Again, the word over here is 3374, awesome, terrifying fear. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the roar of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and righteous Righteousness shall be his griddle of his lions, that is the belt of his lions, the waist, what we call, and the faithfulness, the griddle of his reins, and your every virality of your thinking, he goes on to say that the seat of vigor will be faithful all the days of its life. So these are the first five verses described for us. When you are in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you shall do. And from verse number six till to the point of verse number nine, we have many things to learn over there. He goes on to preach for us the standards of how equity or the standards of equality between both of them will apply. And he goes on further for us to teach as well that as the waters covers the sea so shall the knowledge of Lord God shall cover the earth and that's to the referring to the millennium as well and though in the time of millennium yet there was such a great knowledge yet they will be left out rebellions who want religion apart from Christianity so dear brethren we need to look upon these things very carefully we need to understand as Lord God the Holy Spirit gives for us in the wisdom of his reality that it is by the Spirit of the Lord God what Christ our Lord our God endured his task and so the same burden laid down upon us as well we need to endure the same task only by the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit so this Christmas we have been born in Christ we have been called to look not the signs we have been given the privilege to believe through the word of the Lord of a God and the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher teaching to you to learn and to understand about these things believing these things and understanding this going and becoming disciples and growing up to become grammatias you need to come to serve the Lord of a God in spirit and in biblical truth to the praise of his glory by in return making disciples of all the nations if you're not doing that then you're not in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit which dwelt in Christ which is now available those who believe in the Lord by faith alone in Christ alone to cleanse the garbage of their soul and to make them available to the work of his glory very graciously when you have been there every breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and not to grieve, not to squelch, and not to go along to wax Lord God the Holy Spirit. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leads us according to his thinking to declare all the judgments of Lord God in his mouth because this mouth is now and the voice of this mouth is now the Lord's glory because he says this is the voice of the Lord and they rejected it this has to be the mouth of the Lord in preaching out his judgments rather than wasting our time in silly stupid things we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments have been dedicated to those I have without Christ without hope and without eternal life in order to turn to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ that's the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ we shall be saved Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond to my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. Number one diamond to my witnesses, in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will challenge and bless us by the ministry of your work, which have laid down upon my Christ, have been given for us as well in the power of the Spirit of Lord God, so that, Father, thou alone might be glorified. In Christ's matchless, be Lord's gracious name, we pray, sovereign Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. We wish you all a Macarius Christmas 2019. Grace be with you all.